How you doing everyone? Greetings and welcome to episode 3 of Learning the Terry Basics. So over the last few episodes what we've been doing is dealing with sprites. We've drawn sprites, animated them, got them moving around on screen and we've also looked at a small bit of collision detection. So we're going to wrap up with sprites today by looking at missiles. Now missiles and sprites go hand in hand. There are two missiles available to us in Batari Basic here, and there are also two sprites available to us. And that's not just a coincidence, it's because each sprite is in control of a missile. So we've got the player zero sprite controls missile zero, and the player one sprite controls missile one. Now, I've written up a quick program here just to display a sprite on screen. And you'll see that all I'm doing is opening my main loop, I'm setting the color background and I'm also setting the color for the player zero sprite which is kind of strange because there is no player zero sprite defined inside in this program but the reason for it is that missile zero will always have the same color as sprite zero so for just drawing a missile on its own I need to set the sprite zero color now what I'm putting in here is my missile zero height and a missile can be anywhere from one pixel high, which will just be a dot on screen, so like a small little bullet, right the way up to 255 pixels high, which is actually the entire region of the y-axis. So you'll end up with, if you go and set your missile zero height to 255, you'll end up with a wall running vertically right up the screen. But we'll have a little look at that in a little while. But what I've decided to do here is I've set my missile zero height to five. And then we assign coordinates to a missile exactly the same as we would to a sprite. So for a sprite, we would set our player 0x and our player 0y coordinates. Here we set our missile 0x and our missile 0y coordinates. Then we're drawing the screen and we're looping back to main again. And when I run that program, what I get is this here which isn't all that impressive. But what we have here on screen is not a sprite. It's a missile. And it's at the coordinates I asked it to be at, which were 50 on the x-axis and 23 on the y-axis. And it's actually five pixels high. Now, this is a third object that I can put on screen now that I can use missiles that I couldn't before. I can have two sprites, and now I can have two missiles on screen as well. So automatically, what we can do with a game has increased. So what I want to show you next is how to integrate that little bit of knowledge we have there into a program so that we can have a little spaceship at the bottom of the screen shoot a missile up the screen. But before I show you all that code, we'll go back to our little piece of pen and paper and I'll remind you once more how the X and Y coordinates of a sprite relate to the X and Y coordinates of a missile. Okay, so in the program I'm about to show you, what we're doing is we're going to draw a sprite just like this, a little spaceship, eight pixels wide by six pixels high, and we're going to have it shoot a missile like this. Now, once we stick a missile into a program, it's there, it's on screen no matter what we do. So what we want is we want that it's hidden when we're not pressing the fire button. So all the while that fire is impressed, the X and Y coordinates of this missile are going to be zero, zero. That way it's hidden off screen. But once we press fire, we want it to shoot from the top of our spaceship here. Now you'll remember that when we set a, a sprite's position on screen, it's calculated from the bottom left pixel. So what we want to happen here is we want, when fire is pressed, that this missile's coordinates become the same as this sprite's coordinates, but plus four on the x-axis to bring it to the middle and minus six on the y-axis to bring it to the top. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to show you here is this little program I wrote, it's a little demo actually. And what it'll do is it will put a spaceship down the bottom of the screen and we can move it to the left and the right and we can fire a missile from it that'll travel right up the screen. So what I've done is I've given two variables to start with, outside of the main loop so that they'll be read at the very beginning of the program and then they can change afterwards. I've set x to equal 80 and d I've set to equal 1. And you'll notice here I've also put a little comment in, which is handy to be able to do, to comment your code so that you don't kind of get lost and you can remember what each line does. All you need to do to comment code is after the line of code you've written, you do a space, a semicolon, a space, and then you write a small piece of text just describing what that line does. But anyway, carrying on, 
I've opened up my main loop, I've set my background color, I've set my player zero sprite color, I've drawn my player zero sprite with the matrix here, and then I'm setting up my player zero x coordinate position and my player zero y coordinate position. Then I've got my joystick movement going in here. Now I only want the guy to go to the right and left, so I've only used my joy zero right and my joy zero left commands here. So they'll do as they have always done. Push into the right will increase the value on the x axis, so he'll move across to the right, and push into the left will do the opposite, decrease it so he'll go to the left. Now, this here is a command we haven't looked at before, but it's self explanatory and it's used the same way as any of the joystick commands are. I've got if joy zero fire, so if the fire button is pressed, then d equals 2. Now, when we start the game, d equals 1, so the fire button is impressed. When we press the joystick button, d equals 2. So what's going on is, if d equals 1, if the fire button is impressed, then missile 0 x equals 0 and missile 0 y equals 0. So you remember from what I explained on the paper, if the missile 0 x and y coordinates are set to 0, the missile is off the screen. As far as we're concerned, it's not there. We can't see it. And there's one third little thing here. The c variable equals naught as well. So c always equals naught as long as fire is impressed. If d equals 2, if we've pressed fire, then missile x equals player 0x plus 4. So that is our player 0x coordinate plus 4 to bring it to the center of that sprite. And missile 0y equals 83 to bring it up to the bottom of the gun torrent. And then I have equals 83 minus C. Now you remember that C equals naught here, but what's happening is when we've pressed fire, C will start incrementing. So C equals C plus one. So it'll go from one to two to three to four to five and so on and so forth. And as that's happening, it'll take the value that C is away from 83 and cause the missile to move up the screen to the top. And I've put in a little limiter here so that if C is greater than 90, so if C hits 91, then what will happen is C will go back to zero and D will equal one again. So it says if the fire button hasn't been pressed, the missile will be moved to zero, zero, where we can't see it on screen and C will be brought back to zero. Then we're drawn screen running all this again and we're going back to main. And that's pretty much that. And when we run that program, what we get is our little ship at the bottom of the screen here, which we can move to the left and the right. And when I press fire, it launches a missile. Now, you will notice that when I move the ship and I fire, the missile actually follows the ship. So the missile's X coordinate is locked to the sprite's X coordinate as well. And I'm sure that can be fixed. I just haven't figured out how to just yet. But that is how we can fire a missile from a sprite using Batari Basic. Also what we can do is, using the missile height, we can actually have a missile take the form of a wall that can be a barrier or a puzzle or a type of a game mechanic in a game. And I'd like to show you how to do that with this little program I got here. What we're doing is pretty much exactly the same code as we had before, but what I've done is I have increased the height of the missile from 5 to 225. So what that's doing is making the missile a big, long vertical line. But as we can go to a maximum of 255 on the missile height, what we're going to have is we're going to have a little blank space between 226 and 255. And what I've done here is I've got my missile 0y coordinate is equal to b. And b is something that's going to increment all the time. So what's going to happen is this wall we've made with a gap in it is going to move down the screen constantly. So we're going to have a big line and then every so often a little gap will move down the screen. And in a game that it can make a wall that you could fly through at certain times but should be blocked most of the time. I'll show you that running here right now. So here is our simple barrier. We've got our missile and it made really long and all it's doing is just scrolling down the screen and every so often we get a little break in it that we could, for example, fly our ship through or make Bob the Hedgehog pass through if we so wish. Okay, so earlier on I was saying that sprites and missiles are intertwined. They kind of go hand in hand and it's true. We've seen it in that they share colors. 
player zero shares the same color as missile zero and so on but you can also widen a missile and equally you can put numerous instances of a sprite on screen as well and that's using a command called NUSIZ and there's two variants of it NUSIZ0 and NUSIZ1 and 0 is to do with player 0 and missile 0 and 1 is to do with player 1 and missile 1 but basically what it'll let you do is widen the missile anywhere from 1 pixel to 2 to 4 to 8 wide and it'll also let you set multiple instances of a sprite on screen so you can have um, your one sprite on screen you can have two of exactly the same sprite or three and at different distances apart or you can take that sprite and you can stretch it across the x-axis depending on what values you plug into the NUSIZ command and I've put a list up here on screen from random terrain that kind of explains that and the values a little bit better but I thought to show you just working on a missile to increase its value to 8 here for example this is the same program as I showed you right in the beginning so we've got our missile height will be 5 high but what I've done here is I've inserted the NUSIZ0 command because we're dealing with missile 0 here and I've given it a value or hexadecimal value of 3 oh so what it should do is it should make that missile 8 pixels wide and when we run it what we get is we get exactly what we saw before only instead of being one pixel wide the missile has been stretched out to eight pixels wide it doesn't look all that impressive that way but it does open up a few little opportunities a few extra things that you can do with that and equally from what i can show you here on the sprite side of that what i've done is i've drawn a little player zero sprite that's like our spaceship that we were looking at earlier. I've set them up at position X and Y here at 80 and 40 on screen. And I've set the NUSIZ0 command to string 03. So what that should do is it should give us three instances of that sprite on screen and it kind of placed apart at a short distance. So if I run that, what I will get is this here. So you can really assign these to your sprites and, and have multiple sprites on screen that way. But remember, they are just mirror images of the first sprite. They'll move with the first sprite and equally the collision detection is the same. If any of these touch um, something they're not supposed to or whatever, it works the same as if the first sprite is touching them. That's more or less the way that works. It just gives a few extra little bits and pieces that you can fool around with. Now, just to finish up, what I've done is I've written a small little game. It's kind of the first game I've written because now I can use missiles and whatnot. And it's just a basic little thing with Space Invaders falling down from the top of the screen to try and hit you. I'm not going to explain too much into it because I've just been fooling around with it and trying to figure out stuff without learning uh, any extra commands. So really what I've been doing is I've been trying to get randomness into the game without using any of the random functionality that Batari Basic has. I've been trying to get it to count up lives just using the scoreboard and whatnot. So I don't really want to talk too much about that when I'm sure it's probably not the right way to do it. But what I have done is I've put both the binary and the actual uh, basic text file into a zip file, which you can download if you want. You can play this thing yourself. You can have a look at the code and you can tell me how I can improve it, how I can do it better or what I'm doing wrong more or less. But I'd like to show you that just here now. Uh, oh, that's the code. Hang on. What we want to do is we want to actually run it. There we go. So this here is my game. You'll see that I've modified the score area here so that we don't actually have 300,000 points, but we have our three lives here. And I've got my ship at the bottom, and he will, of course, fire a little missile. Now, the thing is, these guys should be, he doesn't look to be falling randomly right now, but he is more or less falling randomly. And what happens is, if I miss him, he'll come down faster until I shoot him and then he should start kind of falling slow again so it makes the game easy until uh, until he starts falling hard you see I just got hit by him so I'm down to two lives now I got six points though because I'm after shooting him six times there we go seven points and again as you remember the missile is moving on the x-axis as well but um just to let you know all I did to try and introduce a bit of randomness that's anything but as you can see there is I've got 
the um, exposition of the fallen guy, I have set it to a variable. And that variable has been incremented the whole time. And every time he gets destroyed, well then, whatever position that variable is at is where he'll fall from the x-axis. So we end up kind of with some kind of randomness. But what you see here, I've went down to zero lives. Screen goes completely blank. And I've got 13 points. And that's more or less that game. Now there is a bug in it. Whereas that sometimes it'll give you another nine lives once you get to this point and then on it goes again. I don't even know what's going on, but this is how I've been learning. I've learned a few little commands that I'm sharing with you every so often. And then before I get on to the next phase, like next thing I want to do now is all random numbers and how all that works. But I haven't looked at it yet, but I've tried to find some of my own little solutions to deal with randomness so that I'm not going into it completely blind. You know, and kind of going into it with a little idea of what maybe might work, even though it's not really, but just to have a better understanding and just to fool around with it myself a bit, see what limitations are. But there you go. In the next episode, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at the ball and also at the play field, because just as sprites and missiles go hand in hand, there is a fifth thing we can display on screen as a kind of a projectile or whatever we want, and that is the ball. And the ball goes hand in hand with the play field. And the play field is the thing that you would make mazes and whatnot out of. So you could make walls around the screen that you couldn't get past and whatever. But um, it's the next thing that we'll be looking at. So that'll be coming up in a little while as well. I'm still trying to figure a lot of it out, I'll be honest with you. So until then, Take very good care of yourselves. Download that thing. Have a look at it. See what you think. Improve it and let me know. And we will talk to you all again very soon. Bye-bye.